morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of The Morning Show right here on the new Main Street TV. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. We appreciate it. Of course, Jennifer here to start off our morning with the morning news update and, well, some weather, too, um, with our good friend Pete Wilson, of course, and our morning news update is brought to you by Nia Henry, agent for Appalachia Realty. If you're looking to buy or sell, give Nia a call. Or if you just have some real estate questions about our area, no problem. She's your girl. 740-418-4135. All right, let's head on over to our good friend Pete Wilson with the morning news update to start. Pete, you're disheveled this morning. I know. Okay. Did Pam not dress you right this morning? No, she didn't take a last look before I came up. All right. That's be better. She'll be in trouble if she's watching. <laughs> that's right. She's going to be really angry with they're, you. They're both in there where they are. You're good now. Okay. You're good now. <laughs> so what's going on in the world of news, Pete? All right. Well, of course, look outside the window. Yeah. I know you ran into it on your way in a little bit. You know, the weather still, I guess it's winter, right? So, it is. you know, we're getting a good dose of it this week. Uh, another inch or two, at least last night, and uh, the weather forecast, most of them uh, are saying, you know, we could get some more snow or mixed precipitation today. So, uh, you know, we're still getting through all this. As a result, uh, you know, our phone, uh, our uh, texts, beeps, our Facebook messages have just been rolling in this morning uh, so we can tell everybody about what's happening and what's not happening. And here is the latest that we have. Uh, all the schools uh, in Jackson and Vinton counties that were scheduled uh, to be in session today uh, are closed. Most of those decisions were made uh, last night. Uh, the Wellston City Schools were not supposed to be open today uh, for students because of parent-teacher conferences. We'll tell you more about that in just a minute, about that status. Uh, the University of Rio Grande last night, uh, it, the main campuses and all uh, branch campuses were on a two-hour delay. This morning, they made a decision to close. So if you haven't heard that, uh, the University of Rio Grande is closed. Once again, all the other schools uh, that were supposed to have students in are closed completely today as well. Then we have a lot of delays to report to you. Uh, these are the ones that have been called in to us. You know, there could be... Um, there could be others as well. Uh, if, you know, if you need to go out to a governmental office or even a business and you're not sure whether they're open because of the weather, you might maybe want to give them a call or some kind of contact before you go out and maybe it would be unnecessary. Uh, the Jackson County Elections Board will be opening at 10 a.m. this morning, a delayed opening because of the weather. Same thing with the Jackson County Commissioners. They're, they're there in the same building in the Jackson County Courthouse Annex on Portsmouth Street. The Jackson County Health Department, we know some people are going there for vaccines. Uh, it will not be open until 10 a.m. this morning because of the weather. A uh, new Jackson County recorder, Krista Brown, let us know that her office will be opening uh, not until 10 a.m., delayed opening there. Uh, Clerk of Courts Seth Michael in Jackson tells us that the legal division at the courthouse plus the BMV and title office on McCarty Lane, he's in charge of both of those operations, they will open also at 10 a.m. today. Uh, the Jackson County senior citizens will not be operating. Of course, the centers have been closed since spring, but they have been doing as they can. Their services, which include transportation and the uh, home-delivered meals, the center will be closed today, so they won't be able to do those services. Uh, the Jackson Area YMCA here in Jackson, 594 East Main Street, uh, it will be operating today, but not until 11 a.m. Uh, the other programs, unless otherwise indicated, should go on today. Uh, the Wellston City Council meeting tonight that was scheduled for uh, 7 p.m. at the Wellston City Building, Mayor Charlie Hudson says it has been canceled. That's the word he used. Uh, so as far as we know, that meeting uh, will not be held, and the next regular meeting would be Thursday, March the 4th. Uh, the Hamden Fire Department bingo session, they always operate on Thursday evening, but not tonight. It has also uh, been canceled. Uh, Colton Mayor Kim Milliken has announced that the village offices are closed today. It will not be open at all. Also, uh, on this Thursday of the month, they normally have mayor's court at 5 o'clock. That has been postponed and instead pushed back to next Thursday at 5 o'clock. That's February the 25th. Once again, Colton Village offices closed today. Mayor's court 
scheduled for 5 p.m. today has been postponed until 5 p.m. one week from today, Thursday, February the 25th. Jackson County Municipal Court Judge Mark Music had a qualified announcement. The court is open today. They're going to do everything that, that they normally would do if they can. However, uh, if you're scheduled to be in court uh, for uh, some uh, hearing or session and you feel you can't make it because of, of, uh, of hazardous travel traveling conditions uh, where you're coming from, you don't have to come today. Instead, if you're scheduled for a hearing or a session or some appointment today, come on February the 26th. That's a Friday, a week from tomorrow, at the same time that you were supposed to come today. Once again, Jackson County Municipal Court is open today. Uh, they'll do as much uh, on their schedule as possible. If a person or persons who have appointments or hearings today can't make it, give the court a call. And what they want you to do instead is to come at the same time on Friday, February 26th. They've opened up that day for the postponements from today. Now, as far as the Wilson City Schools, they were supposed to have parent-teacher conferences today. They actually uh, postponed them from last Thursday. They're not going to ask parents uh, to uh, come in today, but they're going to do them virtually. So if you needed a parent-teacher conference or you were scheduled for one today, uh, you, uh, it's going to be contacted virtually rather than in person at the different school buildings. Those who have questions or need to schedule a meeting uh, in virtual fashion should contact the school that you're involved in. If your, school, if your child's at the high school, uh, the high school, at the middle school, and so on through the intermediate school and Bundy Elementary School. So they are going to try to carry on with those parent-teacher conferences today. Uh, as we told you earlier in the week, the Jesus in the Hills food giveaway that was scheduled for uh, today has been postponed. Instead, it will be held on Thursday, February the 25th, one week from today. Speaking of weather, Jennifer, didn't know how much you've heard about this. I don't know all the details, but just south of us in Lawrence County, it has a real mess. I heard that on the news this morning, and um, they're without power. A lot right. of folks. A lot of folks without power yeah, there. Uh, bad you know, deal. The, everybody, uh, the officials were worried about the threat of a lot of power lines going down because of the icing. We did have icing here. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, Jackson County, relatively speaking, and Benton County were not badly hit as some of these other counties. Lawrence County is so bad that the governor has declared a state of emergency. It's crazy. And uh, they've asked the Ohio Department of Transportation, the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, the Ohio State Highway Patrol, the Ohio Department of Administrative Services, and the Ohio Emergency Management Agency to all uh, respond. Now, driving around Jackson, I've noticed that at some businesses and at the hotels, there's lots of electric service trucks, mm -hmm. uh, AEP Ohio and others. So I have to think that maybe some of those folks are staying here at night and they're heading down south towards Lawrence County. That I know sense. that there were some power outages here, uh, but from what I could see, AP, AEP Ohio customers and Buckeye Rural customers, really not that many, not as many as we've had uh, in some other weather events. Right. So count your blessings, uh, Lawrence County folks really suffering. If you go for very long without electric power and you count on that for your heat, uh, it's a real bummer, as you know. All right, uh, the Ohio Department of Transportation, District 9, uh, wanted to put out that, you know, they knew this weather was coming. They tried to get out in front of it. Uh, they know that there may be more snow today. They want to once again remind the public, and this is so important, Jennifer, to watch out for those snow plows and trucks that are working, not just ODOT, but all the uh, municipal and county and township jurisdictions that are out with the heavy equipment. Uh, you know, you're tooling along, you're not really going very fast, but then you get right behind one of those very slow moving plows or snow trucks. Obviously, there can be uh, an accident. As a matter of fact, since January the 31st, uh, there have been 11 ODOT snow plows struck. 11. <laughs> what? Right. And, you know, they've got their blinking lights and all like that, and you know they're out there, and you know people should be wow. going slower. But 11 of them, just in the month of February, have been hit by other vehicles. I feel like if you uh, hit a snow plow, you'd lose. Right. And uh, our good buddy Red Thompson was out, uh, you know, looking for snow pictures, and kind of symbolically, he took a picture of a Clinton Township uh, snow truck working up in Hamden. And uh, this is, uh, there it is right there. That's just to visually tell you that 
We know that the traveling conditions aren't the best, but the road crews at all levels, ODOT all the way through the municipal, the county, the township, they are working to try to clear the roads. And really, a lot of the main roads are in pretty good shape. I can't say that I know for sure about all the smaller roads uh, because of the icing. That's a hard thing to get rid of when the temperature uh, stays low. But uh, it, but all these, all these uh, folks are out working extra hours to try to make the traveling conditions better. Jackson County and Vinton County, though, Jennifer, still under a level two, which tells you that there's still some hazardous driving in many of the, I'm guessing, uh, lesser used roads, but people live on them, so it's very important. Yeah, my drive in on the, it's interesting, the highways are wonderful, they're perfectly clear, but I was telling Pete that I, um, driving in, we're getting this drizzle, and as soon as it was hitting my windshield, even with the defrost on, it was freezing. I don't know what the heck's going on, but uh, the highways are looking good, the city streets are pretty good, so... Uh, here in Jackson, anyway. Right, but the, the level twos that have remained in force uh, by Sheriff Ted Frazier here in Jackson County and Sheriff Ryan Kane in Vinton County, that is indicative that there's still a lot of it's, hazardous driving on the lesser used sure. roads, for sure. I mean, I live on Standpipe, and it's it's been plowed numerous times, but it's still very slick. Right, exactly. So. And then at night, when it gets a little colder, you have yep. the freezing going all over Can't again. Can't fight that ice. Well, we have a weather-related tragedy to tell you about. Oh, no. uh, this occurred uh, early Wednesday morning on the Beaver Pike out in Scioto Township, maybe seven or eight miles outside of Jackson. An Ironton man who was doing delivery work died tragically when he was making a delivery at a Beaver Pike resident. Uh, this was called into the sheriff's office at 8.26 a.m. Uh, the man who died, uh, 50-year-old Scott Green of Ironton, what happened was uh, he parked uh, at a residence to make a delivery. Uh, it was on an incline. I don't know exactly know how steep or driveway or whatever, but it was on an incline. He put it in park, but it started to slide anyway because of the ice. He apparently made an attempt to stop the vehicle. It was a van and he slipped, fell under the vehicle oh, and was goodness. killed. Uh, oh, no. So, so tragic. Uh, he was declared dead at the scene by the Jackson County Coroner's Office. Of course, all kinds of emergency personnel out there. Uh, and, uh, you know, once again, just uh, you'd have to, have to be so, so careful. And this gentleman, you know, was used to driving out in the snow and the ice, and sure. he was just trying to do his job. Mm. And uh, just so, so sad. That was reported by the Jackson County Sheriff's Office uh, yesterday. The Jackson County Health Department uh, reported yesterday, and they want folks to know that they're working on getting these uh, vaccines done. However, due to inclement weather and the delivery of new vaccine supplies, a shipment of vaccine from the High Department of Health for scheduled clinics, mainly for second shot folks, folks who were getting older people who were getting their second shots or other people who had got their first shots earlier, those appointments that they had uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday had to be canceled because they didn't have the vaccine. This obviously affected a lot of folks. The second dose of Moderna vaccine was what hasn't come in. They hope to have those clinics scheduled next week to make up for the appointments that were missed this week. Once again, they can't call everybody. So, you know, they're counting on getting information out through the media, social media and on their website. But if you were affected by having your appointment canceled or postponed, they hope that you will be able to receive an automated call once they know when they can make up these appointments or reschedule them. They also hope to update this updated uh, schedule next week on their Facebook page after they know more. Uh, they also want to assure people that just because they weren't able to honor those appointments, you know, after the first vaccine, that doesn't mean that somehow, um, there's a problem because the vaccines are going to be a week or so late. They're going to be just as effective as they would have been. There is a window in there of when that second shot has to be given, and it's much more than three weeks. That's just how, that's just how they try to do it. So that should not be a worry. In connection with that, uh, Governor Mike DeWine, uh, on his uh, almost daily report on COVID-19 update, not sure there was a press conference yesterday, but he did report this in a news release. He did acknowledge that due to severe weather across Ohio and the entire country, doses of Pfizer and Moderna vaccines that were supposed to come into them there in Columbus did not come. So as a result, chain reaction, 
a lot of that vaccine did not make its way uh, to the county level. And of course, Jackson County Health Department affected by that. I'm guessing that a lot of the health departments uh, in our 88 counties have been affected by that. All right, uh, we want to focus now on something positive after you know all this weather and vaccine and the tragedy out on Beaver Pike. Uh, we reported earlier in the week that Sheriff Ted Frazier did his uh, awards event uh, for the employees. He just showered awards uh, on, on his employees. Uh, oh, uh, everybody, uh, almost everybody there in the department got some award. He appreciates everything that they do and that he, they do well in their service. But we want to point out three of the major awards, I guess. We wanted to show their pictures here uh, for those watching, uh, you know, on, uh, on TV and also, uh, you know, on Facebook. First, uh, the dispatcher of the year was uh, Joe Hale, and there is Joe on the right. He is standing there with Sheriff Ted Frazier. The corrections officer of the year was uh, Seth Irvin, and Seth is in that group there along with uh, some of his supervisors. That is Seth standing right next to Sheriff Frazier there on the back row. He was the corrections officer of the year. And then the other award that we want to uh, show you the picture on is the Deputy of the Year. And that was Leif Smith. That is Leif standing next to Sheriff Frazier. And uh, we had a report with lots of pictures in our Wednesday paper on this, uh, but there were awards for service, for heroism, uh, because you retired, uh, for safe driving, for perfect attendance, a uh, person of steel award just for being reliable each and every day and doing something important behind the scenes. Sheriff Ted Frazier definitely appreciates his staff and has shown it, and he definitely wanted us to publicize that. Okay, the Jackson Area YMCA, we told you that Tim Harvey, very excited about the 24-hour access that's going to be available to members who are ages 21 and over. Now that the governor has lifted the curfew uh, for that, uh, to where nighttime activity, overnight activity is allowed, he can go ahead with the 24-hour access. You do need to register, if you're a member, you need to be a member to have the 24-hour access and you need to register. That registration process will begin on Wednesday, February the 24th, that's six days from now. Uh, once again, the access is limited to ages 21 and older and is limited to the cardio room, the weight room, and the restroom. The cost, if you want this option, you don't have to do it if you're a member, but if you want this option, it's $5 a month extra on your membership Current members who desire to have this 24-hour access must register. It will not be automatic. It is a choice. So you need to uh, go to the website there or the next time you're at the Y, talk to somebody there at the counter. And if you're a member, they will sign you up. That starts, the registration process starts on February 24th. If you're a supporter of the Y, a member of the Y, or a prospective member of the Y, uh, this is a big uh, step forward for the Y. A lot of folks, you know, are members of the Y, not only to support something good, but because personal fitness, this is a chance for you to uh, be able to exercise the weights, the fitness, the cardio room uh, 24 hours a day once this is set up, and it will be very, very soon. At, at the, the county commissioner's meeting on Wednesday, engineer, county engineer Melissa Miller was there, and they have an updated map of Jackson County. Uh, from the, uh, that was put out by the engineer's office, uh, and there it is. I'm sure that copies of this will be available to those uh, in the public uh, who you know, need to access this as a reference or as a resource, and that are, those are the commissioners. You see Donnie Willis, uh, Paul Haller, and uh, uh, of course, uh, let's see, Paul Haller, Donnie Willis, and uh, John Hensler there, I think, along with uh, Melissa Miller showing the uh, new uh, map that they have. And uh, as far as its availability to the public, we haven't been told about that, but we know that it's there and they were showing it off. Uh, Engineer Miller was also there uh, to uh, discuss uh, new weight limits on many of the bridges. Those are being done for safety reasons, of course. This is an ongoing process uh, to make sure that the roads and bridges are safe. Speaking of roads, uh, the Madison Township trustees have announced that a section of John Evans Road, this is a heavily used township road near Oak Hill, is closed temporarily. Uh, they hope that uh, it closed on Wednesday afternoon. They hope it will be open by the end of today, but that's dependent on how long the road takes, maybe some weather as well. But the section that is closed 
uh, on John Evans Road is between State Route 93 and North Bingham Street, which is actually in the village. A lot of people cut over on that road into the village rather than go down 93. Also, the Wellston Lions Club has announced that its fish booth is going to be open again for the first time this year. I'm not sure it's going to be open every weekend, but uh, they'll be open as much as they can. Very popular item in Wellston. Uh, it will be open this Friday and Saturday from 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, this Friday, 5 to 7 p.m., and then on Saturday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., and the uh, fish booth operated by the Lions Club will be set up in front of the Dollar Tree store on Pennsylvania Avenue, about right there in the center of town across from Giovanni's Pizza. Uh, once again, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Friday, and then 5 to 7 p.m. on Saturday. I'm sorry, I'll say that again. 5 to 7 p.m. on Friday, and then 11 to 1 on Saturday. And uh, you can get fish sandwiches, veal sandwiches, french fries, uh, low-cross beverages. You can get combos. And all the proceeds that the Lions Club makes from their uh, fish booth, their food booth, uh, goes for their community projects. They've been big supporters of the community track project, for instance. The Canners Cave 4-H camp has announced that it's family hiking day. This was a new event that they had set to get people out there to uh, appreciate Canners Cave and maybe raise a little money. This was set for February uh, the, the 27th, that's a week from Saturday. Because of the condition uh, of the trails out there, because of the weather and the ice, they have decided to postpone that to Saturday, March the 20th. It will happen, but they moved it back three weeks, hoping that the trails will be in better shape by then. Uh, but it's gonna cost you $5, ages kids five and younger are free, but you'll get to go on guided hikes. Uh, there'll be s'mores, hot chocolate, coffee, uh, campfire, an open canteen, which means the food service will be out there uh, opened at the lodge. They also will be showing off the Harrison Powell Lodge and the Foundation Lodge and some improvements that have been made there since last year. If you want to know more about the Family Hiking Day, uh, which is now scheduled for March the 20th, you can send an email to Canners Cave or give them a call. The number is 286 4 